when did you formally formally become executive director in june 2000 and in june 2020 in june 2020 yeah also in the midst of the pandemic yeah and yeah so so in the yes yes oh dear right in the midst of the pandemic yeah which was very i mean because that time people are working from home so you, so you well. first held for a little i had for a little yeah from about from january 2020 All till right. june 2020 again in the midst of so pandemic period your your formalizing of the leadership the executive leadership role yeah. is within this yes pandemic. but even the actually even during the acting because yeah. the pandemic came in yeah. when was that march around march 16 17. Yeah. Yeah. so i just just done two months of acting yeah so just learning to interact with staff in my new role and mm. then all of a sudden close office mm. make decisions because now corona comes mm. you have to make quick decisions mm. i remember we had to make really quick decisions mm. and then so you close the office people are working from home but then now how does that work we had never worked i mean i think at um bbc the only place i'd had an experience of working from home was at bbc media action mm -hmm. yeah in ti we'd never yes it's a bit of it's a we, we try we pride ourselves in being a flexible environment but mm -hmm. working from home was not so common we didn't have mm. even a policy on how do you mm. work from home mm. who works from home mm. you know we, we have a flexi time policy but not not really how you know in terms mm. of working from mm. home so we've never mm. done this work from mm. home thing mm. um but now you have to close office then what happens to all these meetings activities you had planned 2020 was gonna was supposed to be such a great big year mm. and then for me also uh because at that point i'm acting mm -hmm. of course i also want to get the, mm. the substantive role mm. You know, I also mm. want to get the substantive role. Mm -hmm. So there are things also I have in my own little mm -hmm. vision, mm -hmm. uh, my little strategy, mm -hmm. things I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they always say when you get into these positions, what what are those top things mm -hmm. you'll do in mm -hmm. your 100 days? So I'm, I'm not even past my 100 days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have things I want to do because I also want to show that, hey, I can mm -hmm. actually do this mm -hmm. job full time. Mm -hmm. And then Corona happens. Mm -hmm. So we have to quickly regroup mm -hmm. um, and, and, and uh, you know just discuss how mm. how do we work from home mm. Mm. you know what are the protocols mm. how do we coordinate mm -hmm. how do we continue our work in a remote mm. environment mm. you know we have cancelled activities mm. but mm. you know again we are donor funded mm. those contracts grants have mm. limits mm. they have mm. timelines mm -hmm. you know you mm. they will have to close at some point mm. do you know do will we have to return the money mm -hmm. The, some of those donors were like, mm. okay, you know, we can't give you extension of time. Mm. We sought extensions for some mm. of the projects. We have to quickly think, what mm. do we do on this? What mm. do we do on this? Seek extensions, mm. continue. Mm. If we are to continue, um, do we have platforms, remote working platforms? Mm. Do, our, do our stakeholders, mm -hmm. especially for some of the work we do is machinani. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's regional work, outreach mm. work. Mm. You know, mm. people there don't have access to Zoom and mm. all these teams mm. and all mm. these other platforms. How mm. do we continue to engage with them? Mm. So all these decisions of, how do we then navigate and, and transition and continue to work even mm. as we face this pandemic? Mm. Mm. Because I think after one or uh, two months, we realize this thing is not going anywhere. First, we thought, mm. okay, it's just one week, mm. then it will go. Mm. One week becomes a month, a month, a month becomes two, mm. two months mm. becomes six months. Mm. It's not going. Mm. So mm. what do you do? Mm -hmm. You have to continue. So we had to come up quickly with policies and protocols mm. of how we, we, we work, mm. how we report, how we mm. coordinate, mm. how we plan our work. How you retain yeah. staff. Yes, retain mm. staff again. Mm. There's also the threats in terms of fundraising mm. that then because some donors now are shifting focus. Mm. Um, now it's all about, you know, the mm. COVID-19 mm. mitigation, mm. Um, channeling resources to the health sector. Mm. So, uh, you know, and but, but also for us, we... Again, they tell you sometimes, you know, a, pe a pessimist will see the challenges, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, an optimist will see the opportunities, mm -hmm. even with some very grave challenges like like, uh, like COVID. Co like COVID. Mm -hmm. So we actually started thinking, what were the opportunities mm -hmm. for us? Yes, we are facing mm -hmm. a pandemic. People mm -hmm. are losing lives. People mm -hmm. are losing their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. People are falling sick. Mm -hmm. But again, in everything, there's always, yeah. What, so what's that thing that we can still do during this time? Mm -hmm. And, and so for us, we started um, work on tracking the COVID-19 funds mm. from from about like the second, third week, we started now saying, okay, how do we track? Mm. We can't go out to the field. We can't do social audits that we mm. usually do, go mm. to offices, get mm. information. People are not mm. in the offices. Mm. So we said, let's have an online tracker. Mm. Mm. So we had uh, what we used to have. We have an action for transparency application mm. and app. Mm. Mm. Uh, which we normally would use to track resources in the education, mm -hmm. budgets and, and expenditure in the education and health sector mm -hmm. in Nairobi, which we were mm -hmm. using for that work. Mm -hmm. 
and and then we had scaled it up to other counties mm. in, in 2019. Mm. So we decided let's use this. Let's mm. let's let's remodel this to mm. actually track mm. the COVID-19 funds mm. and you know the whole full row mm. <laughs> that was uh, that happened. You mm. know once we realized that some actually some funds had been you know mm. misappropriated mm. about we're talking about eight billion which couldn't uh, because of the botched procurements yeah, yeah. Mm. because of the botched uh, procurement. So we started talking about that mm. issue. That mm. How do we track funds? So we started tracking. Mm -hmm. Money was being contributed. Mm. People there was a COVID-19 uh, fund mm. that had been set up. Government mm. was reallocating budgets mm. both at the county level and the national level. Mm. Donors were, you know, bringing, uh, committing money. So we're tracking how much money is coming in. Right. But where is it? Where is it? Of course, the, where where is it being spent? Of course, the information on expenditure is always difficult. And can I always say, trying to get information in Kenya is like trying to pull teeth. <laughs> it's very hard to come by. Mm. And information mm. is is best served cold here. Mm. By the time you get information, especially on financial mm. financial governance related information, mm. you will really ask for it. Mm. Um, so we say asking, writing letters mm. to, to institutions, tell us how you spent this money, you're looking for this information. Nothing was forthcoming, mm. nothing. Mm. <laughs> so we, we started now the advocacy bit. Mm. You know, the you know just bringing together civil society organizations to so speak this about... So citizen-led advocacy? I mean, we're, we're basically like we, we initiated just coming to, together with, with other organizations, other, yes. other governance and human rights organizations. Okay. Right. And even at some point, the medical, mm. uh, like the Kenya Medical mm. Association, the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers, mm -hmm. the Nurses Union, as, mm -hmm. the, nurse, the Nurses Association as well, mm -hmm. just to start asking questions on where are this, where, where is this money going? Mm. Can you tell us how this money has been used? Mm. And also starting to, to, to advocate for certain uh, measures to be put in place mm. in terms of open procurement, mm. open contracting in the health sector. Mm. Because I think the health sector has always had challenges in this country. Mm. You know, so many scandals which have not even been resolved. Mm. Uh, you know, the Mafia House scandal, mm. those uh, issues around the global fund use. Mm. Um, and, and, and there are many others, you know, that have not, not been resolved up mm. to now, the managed equipment sc uh, mm. services scandal as well. Mm. So uh, on the back of this scandal, now there's COVID. Mm. And of course, now we get wind that at some point, mm. there were botched procurements. Mm. And we had been asking, you know, that even for procurement, mm. in terms of just being proactive, mm. let us have uh, protocols and, mm. and, and uh, regulations around emergency procurement, mm. you know. Um, how do you do it? Because we are never, we are not foreseen the pandemic, and mm. we, and we appreciate that. Yes, we're in a pandemic. Things have to be done pretty fast. Mm. You know, people are. It's a, it's a matter of life and death. Yeah. And you 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 need life saving. Mm. You, you you need life saving resources mm. that have to be uh, procured pretty quickly. Mm. But then, even with all that, you throw accountability out of uh, the window and just procure endlessly. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, where are the emergency regulations? Mm. You know. Um, let's have them so that we know how accounting officers are guided mm. in terms mm. of how they will procure. Mm. Um, where is a, a market price index? We mm. need a market price index. Mm. The, this is a public procurement regulatory uh, regulation, uh, regulatory authority is supposed to be doing uh, uh, issuing a regular market price index showing the prices of items that are regularly procured in government so mm. that they don't pass the ceiling. Mm. But then there's no market price index for even those common goods that mm. were, and, and some uh, goods that were being sought by uh you know medical facilities mm. at that point you know mm. what was the market price for the ventilators mm. market price for masks mm. you know sanitizers mm. all mm. these things that mm. we needed the ppes right and you now saw the story that came out that mm. these things were being procured at very high mm. you know inflated mm. uh prices mm. and even up to now some of those things are still at the Kemsa warehouse mm. and we've lost them we've, mm. they, they lost money we spent money on it but they can't you know give them to the counties because the counties can't afford to buy them. Yeah. So, so there are all these questions, and we try to agenda set. Mm. Then let's have these guidelines on procurement. Mm. Let's ensure that oversight agencies, you know, the likes of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, mm. the PPRE, uh, responsible for procurement, Parliament. These mm. are the things they need to be doing right now. Mm. And this is the level of involvement. Mm. Even as we have this National Emergency Response Committee for COVID-19, mm. these oversight institutions need to be there. They're mm. auditor generals of what are what is their role in this and how can they need to be involved. Mm. Besides pushing for those things, some things I think why I, I guess, um, you know, the, the, the president later on came in August uh, 2020 and gave some measures in mm. terms of procurement, mm. publication of information which we had been asking, mm. that all this information needs to be published so people are able to track, get information of even who is owning these companies, you know, because the whole thing, uh, 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 suspicion that there was a lot of conflict of interest, that government was basically trading with government. Mm. You know, it's, it's uh, public officers, who are owning some of these companies, or, or very well connected politicians who are owning these companies, which are being given contracts to supply the COVID-19 and, and the, the materials, the PPEs, and so on. And I mean, right now, I think that case has not uh, has not been resolved mm -hmm. yet. We're still pushing for it to be 
uh, for, for prosecution. Yeah. Uh, and yes. Yeah, the investigation has taken quite a bit of time, more than two years, but mm. we still hope that Kenyans get justice because it's sad that resources were lost mm. even at a time when Kenyans were literally on their knees, mm. people on their deathbeds. Mm. Mm. So for us, that became an agenda. Mm. Mm. You know, fighting, ensuring that COVID-19 resources are ring fenced, mm. ring fenced and well mm. used. Mm. So, yeah, so despite all this now having to shut, mm. you know, people having to work from home, but mm. we still had to continue. You know, mm. the work, in fact, I tell, I told my colleagues mm. that even as we go home, remember mm. that this is a time now when we need to be most vigilant, mm. especially in a time of crisis like this. Mm. And that is exactly mm. what happened. So we knew that we had to be vigilant. Mm. We knew that we had to continue being innovative mm. and being alert on what was happening mm. and reacting and, I mean, and agenda setting. You kept the entire team? We kept most of the team. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of the team was still there because mm -hmm. we had continuing mm -hmm. grants. grants. I think we are, we are I want to, a lot of credit to our Transparency International mm -hmm. is have various projects running. Mm -hmm. So we have various programs, we have various mm -hmm. projects mm -hmm. um, within those programs mm -hmm. and uh, supported by different uh, the different donors. Mm -hmm. So some um, institutional donors, mm -hmm. um, some foundations mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, we also tried to raise our own resources mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, we lost a number of people, of course, because, mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, mm -hmm. some projects came to an end mm -hmm. and we were unable to renew them because, again, mm -hmm. donors, or some of these donors had mm -hmm. uh, uh, had their own priorities. Mm -hmm. But really, mm -hmm. we, we retained most of the mm -hmm. team. We really, mm -hmm. that was really central, just mm -hmm. to ensure that, mm -hmm. you know, even at that, we, even when we resume, when things mm -hmm. go back to normal, mm -hmm. which now we know, even, and even in that new normal mm -hmm. that we kept talking about, mm -hmm. We still have, mm. you know, people who, mm. who, who people are still there mm. to do the work. Mm. So we really, of mm. course, that issue around sustainability. I mm. mean, as a, as a, as a head of an institution, of course, mm. the issue around sustainability resource mobilization is what yeah. will keep you up at night. Yeah, and it does, eh? Well, I, I don't know that you can see my white hairs, but <laughs> <laughs> all these white hairs yeah. have all been gained in the last two years. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it keeps you up awake because That's you're like you're dealing with people's lives. Yeah, you're dealing with people's livelihoods. You know, yeah. you have staff. Yeah. You, you don't want to be the one, um, you know, in your in your tenure, you know, uh, you don't want the organization to, you, to, to fall in your tenure. You're yeah. here holding the organization. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as, yes, you have the staff supporting you and you have the board mm. giving you oversight mm. and guidance mm. and, and ensuring that there's accountability. Mm. But then you see you're the one who has been charged. You and Okanakazi, the board is, yeah. the board is, yeah. the board is not even paid out board personally. Yeah. I mean, um, it's not remunerated. Yeah. Yeah. They're not personal. They're not remunerated. They don't receive yeah. a, a shilling. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so they also have their own work. Yeah. yeah. They have their own work, but they're giving their time. Their yeah. So, the, yeah. so they, 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 they will give you the oversight. They'll give you the advice and mm. everything, but it's mm. you, you're the one who's paid mm. there full time, mm. you know, to hold that institution, mm. hold that mm. baby mm. Uh, together. So, mm. Yes, you, you get the support, but mm. you're the one held accountable mm. for years. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's on you. Mm. So you also have to ensure that, yes, there are people who have come and gone, and mm. TITI was formed in 1999. Mm. So this year we're turning 23 years. Yeah. So in those 23 years, yeah. the, or before me, 21 years, yeah. there are people who worked so hard to keep that yeah. organization. Yeah. So yeah. after that, yeah. do you want the baby to fall? Exactly. To fall in your yeah. hands? And yet it's not just... It is on you, but it's also not just all on you because the the, the, the factors, the, the the factors surrounding yeah. this season are not just um, things that are, there are things that are outside your control as well. Yes. You know, the the, the, the COVID situation, for instance, is yeah. one of those that's not um, in your situation. I mean, in your control. However, you know, the pain points are real. <laughs> yeah, the pain points are real and they're affecting people. And yeah. these are people with families. And mm. also you, you don't want, and also people are also relying on Transparency International Kenya yeah. as the premier anti-corruption institution yeah. mm. to, 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 to champion for issues mm. around transparency at mm. that very critical time. Mm. Those resources, every single shilling must mm. count. Mm. So, you know, there's that expectation out mm. there. What mm. are you guys doing about mm. this? Mm. You know, mm. um, but there's also, you're also trying to ensure that even despite these challenges, yeah. Those projects, those resources that you yeah. already have for other projects that have been yeah. affected by Corona, yeah. continue. Yeah, you know. So you speak about resourcing is a major thing that keeps you up yes, at night yes. um, as a, as the head of the organization, and uh, and 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 you know I've spoken with many other leaders who you know I, uh, say the same. What other thing you know is crucial as a head of organization? Do yeah. you think a lot about? Mm. Um, for for you in your case yeah. for an organization like TI